Hawk is a 40 minute fantasy thriller about one young boy's gradual descent into darkness over about a 20 year period as he becomes a man. Although it's telling a very small story, uh, it's told in a very epic, broad, fantasy way. It's about a young boy having to, to grow up on his own and having to learn the difference between wrong and right. Hawk starts with um, a young boy called Rowan. Him and his grandfather have moved away from general society. It's mainly kind of focused on Christian beliefs and their beliefs are much older. He's alone in one respect, but in another, he has his, his mother, his grandfather's spirits, and all the stories, and the antlered god, and his head is so full of his grandfather's stories and he's believed them, they've become alive for him. To them, a tree is just wood, sap, bark. To me, it is heart, blood, skin. Gradually over the years, he sort of descends into a much darker adult sort of hermit who lives in the, in the hills alone with only the friendship of a, of a hawk which he's grown up with. One moment then, you looked like your mother. She liked my stories too. She loved all the old tales and she believed in them. Philip Maddock is a fantastic old school Welsh actor, classically trained and has been in the business a long, long time. Philip Maddock plays Rowan's grandfather. He is sort of the, the wise man of the film. He's a man of integrity, a man who's aware, of course, of nature and all it stands for. For me, as a director, he kind of brought the gravitas and the kind of knowledge that this character needed because he has most of the, of the dialogue in the film and therefore most of the information is conveyed to the audience. That's been his life, that's how he's grown up. He wants to pass that on to the next generation, the generation after that, and that's his function within this film. <laughs> the Antler God is an old mythic character. He's not an evil force, but at the same time he has to be respected and it's when he isn't respected that his wrath, if you like, will be, will be heard. The Antler God is truly a god of nature and as we know, nature can be cruel and can be kind. And He's sort of an ambiguous figure that Christianity over the years tried to manipulate and demonise into a sort of devil-like figure. It's often said that the horns of the Antler God are the horns of the devil and it's, it's through imagery like the Antler God through, across thousands of years that the current image of the devil descends from. We try and go back and take an honest look at that belief and what the pros and cons of it would be, particularly on a young boy in a kind of forgotten, fantastical past. The potential for Hawk to be an awesome film was right there from the start. When I came onto it, there was already concept art, there was already a, a highly ambitious project already in place. So from my point of view, my role was just to try and realise that ambition, try and get 40 people on a mountain making a fantasy film on a short film budget, um, which I think we achieved. What was strong on the shoot was the spirit of creativity. Everybody was trying to pull towards that, that goal of trying to make this little gem of a movie. Mythic fantasy films are in a way, I would say, harder to write than your kind of average contemporary drama. And you have to have a lot of detail in there and everything has to have meaning and there's a lot of symbolism. It was one of the best experiences that I've had professionally. Mac has the sort of personality that seems to me to be suitable for making films. He has his ideas and they're, they are precise and um, he has an aim, an intention. Those are the sort of films that I want to make as a feature filmmaker. So. It kind of makes sense to me to have those challenges uh, as early as I can in my career, so set those into a short film. In order 
for the story and the, and the film to hold up to the viewer, it needed to have big classical score in the right places and also could be uh, gentle in the right places too. The soundtrack is orchestral basically. Uh, we used a full orchestra, uh, strings and brass and a few woodwinds uh, and a four part choir and soloists so it's quite a big production. The important thing was to have those Welsh voices singing Welsh lyrics. Any kind of sprinkling of Welsh that I could add to the story just felt like uh, another secret ingredient that would help the film have some magic. I wanted to capture the small story as well because it's basically the story of one guy, one boy growing into a man and his, his life experience. You get the broad brush stroke of, of the landscape and the, the bigger picture but you get, you get the small emotions as well. It's always been a film that's made for a big screen and you know, it's very much a film about landscape so it needs to be seen on a scale. I wanted to set a short film that was a challenge. It was something that you can ultimately complete and finish but at the same time encompass production tasks that would you normally get on a feature film. Pick out fascinating subjects like this hawk then um, there's no one really to stop you you know and there aren't many people doing this sort of thing. Audiences can have a very edgy or seat suspense filled worrying and quite gripping ride. There isn't anything like this that's out there at the moment, I, something with um, spirit. I think the results are on the screen and I'm extremely happy with, with the scale of it, with the epicness of it, and I think something to be proud of.